Hello and welcome to the garden. So in the last video, I was planting out the tomatoes in the greenhouses and the polytunnel here. And today it is the turn of the aubergines and the peppers. So I've got bull's horn type peppers to go in the main greenhouses. I'll put red in one and yellow in the other. In the polytunnel here, well, I've got nine aubergines, but I'm only gonna put six in there. I've got three different varieties and I'll put two of each in there, I think. And I will probably put a few pepper plants in here. I think sweet banana will probably go in here. The aubergines are long purple or I think leggy purple would be a better word. Although all those stems are pretty chunky now. Uh, Rosa sfumata, so that's the white one with the pink tinge to it and Violetta di Firenze. So three nice varieties and I've got some issues with the aubergines because they're covered in aphids so I've got to deal with that. And then the final job, although probably the largest part of it, will be to set out the the smaller greenhouse, what we call the chili house because that's usually what it's filled with and we will pot up lots of peppers and chilies in there in uh, 10 litre pots and probably connect up the watering system for those, get that all ready to go. That does mean quite a bit of rearranging in there. I've still got propagators in there, so that all needs to be cleared out. First job though, sort out these aubergines. So uh, they look fine from above. I knew there was a little bit of aphid on there. I showed a little bit of that on the previous video. Um, and all I've been doing is just occasionally when I, when I spot some, just giving them a little rub there and getting rid of them. But underneath, I don't know how well that will show up, but underneath these leaves, they are covered with them. So yeah, I've got to get rid of that. And I think there's too much here just to be rubbed off. So I've got a little squirty fellow. It's not very effective. It's supposed to be a, providing a, a fine mist. Oh, it'll do. And um, in here, this is mostly water, a little drop of a soft soap. This is a very mild natural soap. It's an organic Castile soap made from olive oil. No perfumes or, or any other additives to that. So. It's about as pure and, and gentle as you can get. I think that's rather better than using washing up liquid. Let's be honest, I've used washing up liquid in the past and lots of gardeners put a splash of detergent in some water and use that, but I prefer not to. There's all sorts of stuff in that. It's not in here. So I've only put a tiny amount in. You don't need a huge amount. And I'm just going to go over these leaves and give them a good washing off. This lower leaf I'm going to take off. It's old and tired already. It's not doing anything. But the soap, the soapy water will certainly deal with these. So I'll give that a good squirt and a bit of a rub clean. Dear oh dear, what a mess. What I might do first is, is just put the uh, hose on a fine spray and try and rinse some of this away before I finish up with the soap again. The soap will deal with any that I've missed. Now I, I don't often use any sort of pesticide. There are some that are fine for organic growers, but I, I don't tend to use them. A jet of water or rubbing some pests off of your plants is very often enough, but a little bit of soap can be really handy when you're faced with a bit of a mess like these. They don't seem to have suffered too much, but if I don't get rid of them, they will be overwhelmed and, and all this new growth up here will come out distorted and, and ugly. And of course you get that sticky residue and then you get molds and sooty moulds and you don't want any of that so
with a small infestation, that would be more than enough to, if not eliminate it, then keep it under control. But this one's pretty bad, so I am going to get some more of that soapy water on there. And it will also wash, help wash off that sticky residue. I'll have to keep an eye on these over the next couple of weeks. Keep this handy in the polytunnel. Anytime I see it building back up, I will give them a bit of a spritz and, and a bit of a squish. And they're hiding up here in the new leaves, of course, so that's where it's tricky to get to them. And that's where the soap spray is particularly helpful. Well, I've been debating the spacing in here, so I've got a tape measure on the ground and just looking at different spacings, and I think I'm going to go for 50 centimetres apart, so nearly 20 inches, and... That gives me space for the six aubergines here and I think another six peppers can go in here. Now I'm not a hundred percent certain yet how I'm going to train these. They will go up on wires and I will either take a single stem up or then I will take a pair of stems and they will be a pair of stems in this direction so there'll be in total four across this center bed here so I haven't decided that yet and I don't have to decide that today um, I think some of these ah, I think my spare plants have already divided into two quite chunky stems but all these I'm putting in today there's still one main stem now any one of these side shoots here could form the second stem to take up but that gives me a little bit of time to think through that decision. So all I need to do is get these in the ground. Right, this first one is long purple and well the plant is pretty long as well. This is the one I've been calling leggy purple. So these are ungrafted plants doesn't really matter too much how I set these in. This ground has had some feed and some compost. So I'm not adding anything to the planting hole. Yep, yeah, that'll be fine. I've got a split cane up the side of this one. When he started off, these stems were quite tall and a little bit on the weak side. I'll leave that split cane in for now. It's not going to cause any harm. And, well, yeah, I think next year I need to start these later. I need to start the peppers a week or two later. There is a lot of root in here, and I don't like to see that. That's more than I would like, really. I will tease a little bit out gently. I think they'll be okay, but I do not need to start these quite so early in the season. I'll take off some of these lower leaves. I've already pulled a few of the old ones off, but these young ones at this at this height, they're, they're of no use. You can see this big one here, it's sort of touching the ground already, so... There's no point having those others develop there. They will just drag in the dirt and go messy. So, uh, put the tape in the right place. So, 50 centimeters on. Because I will be pruning these either to one or two stems, 
this spacing is not a problem. They're not going to get really bushy here. I want them to go vertically, not horizontally. And again, all of this scrappy little stuff down the bottom can go. Don't want it. And see that old leaf there can go as well. Yeah, lots of root in these. Well, they're not bad plants. If it weren't for the aphids, I'd be very happy with them so far. But they'll certainly be happy to get their feet down into some proper soil now. I might move this soaker hose actually to that size. Yeah, that, that's better on that side, I think. I put a row of spare onions down the middle just for fun. I wasn't planning to, but I had them before I threw the spare seedlings away. I've put a row down there. Whether I wait for them to do anything or probably take them as spring onions at some point. As I'm planting these, I am checking the orientation, making sure that there will be a shoot in the right sort of place if I do decide to take two stems up instead of just the one. Two is what I normally do, but. I need to think about it. I don't want this to get too crowded in here. It was quite crowded in here last year. That's why we've changed the layout here. We dropped these paving slabs down. They're not fixed on anything and they're all higgledy-piggledy, but I can always set those a bit more carefully later if we decide that this is actually the layout we want to keep. So the six peppers I'm putting in here, these look okay this is sweet banana and I had two propagators one just had peppers and chilies that seems to have escaped more or less with little or no aphid trouble the other one had the aubergines and some of the chilies and peppers and that one has quite a few aphids and I think some of those that I had in the uh, polycarbonate box in the large greenhouse they've also got the aphids but I think these six are three of them so that's fine. So this is sweet banana it's a pretty prolific pepper they will ripen to a, a sort of pale orangey red but I think they're probably just as well taken green it's one of the one of those varieties where I don't really mind them green and it is prolific and should give us some early fruit so as usual I'll take a couple of the lower leaves out of the way. Now these are all splitting in different ways so the peppers and chilies will naturally divide at some point sometimes into two stems sometimes into three. I definitely don't want three stems here so I'm looking at these plants again picking which two of the three stems on this one I'm going to keep. Some of these no, I think, I think most of these have split into three. So one of these I will prune off shortly. So I'm just looking at it to pick the best looking two. And uh, I think that naturally fits quite well. So It won't be long before I have to get the strings on these and start their pruning and training. In the small greenhouse where I grow them in pots, I do very little pruning with those, but 
the ones I put in the, the polytunnel here and in the greenhouses, those I like to train up on two stems. These tend to be the larger fruited sorts, so I think it works well for those, whereas with some of the smaller fruited sorts, I don't think you have to be quite so fussy about the training of them. I mean, you can just let all the plants go how they want, if you like, now they can then bush out. Some people like to pinch the tips out when the plants are quite small, encourage a more bushy plant. I tend not to do that. I'd much rather use the vertical space than the horizontal. These are just about ideal. The first fruit is going to be here. They're quite long, slender fruits. This one will keep off of the ground and that's great. You don't want the fruit dragging on the ground. Well, these aren't too pot bound. I mean, there's a lot of root in here, but they're not bad little plants. And I think that orientation for this one. Well, the polytunnel is nearly finished now. This hanging shelf, of course, will have to go in a few weeks time. I've got the leeks and my mystery onion seedlings, celeriac and so on. It can stay here for a little, little bit, but as soon as I need to get the strings on, this shelf has to go. But the polytunnel is pretty much done now. I've got that row of onions down the middle. I've got the garlic around the outside. All the tomatoes are in. Six peppers and six aubergines. The only thing that remains is to get some basil in, in front of the tomatoes. And I'll do that in the next week or two. And yeah, I'm quite happy with this layout now. It's different from last year, but I'm fairly happy with it. This is probably how it's going to be in the longer term. And yeah, it's looking good. So I'm back in one of the greenhouses now. And <laughs> this one is a bit of a nightmare. There's this hedgerow of parsley here and it's going completely nuts. Of course, it's trying to flower and it's its natural flowering time. We keep hacking it back and it keeps growing a couple of feet every few days, throwing up these flower spikes. The parsley itself, not, the, not this ratty stuff up here, but the, the proper leaves, they're still fine. They're nice, they're tasty. There's no problem with it. It's just that it is desperately trying to flower and as a consequence makes this huge hedgerow that's getting in everybody's way. It won't be long though before we have to pull those out. But anyway, the big debate in here is how many plants I'm going to put along this row. So I'll be setting these fairly close to the path here. And that leaves me room for access or quite possibly somewhere to drop a few of my peanut plants. I had French beans running down the middle of this bed last year. It was okay, although if I do it again, I will be spacing them out quite a lot so that I can get in here to manage the tomatoes. So I've got a dozen plants, which means I could put all 12 in and then they would be spaced 40 centimeters apart, or I could put 10 of them in and space them out at 50, which is the spacing I've used in the polytunnel. Now, I think in here, I'm going to put all 12 in. These are not going to be bushy plants. The natural habit for these bull's horn peppers is pretty vertical anyway. I mean, you can force them to bush out by pinching out the tops. Most of them, I think, no, by no means half of them have already split, let's say, um, quite high up. It's a good height, the fruit can be quite long. I don't want them producing too much fruit low down, that doesn't help at all. So I will train these again in, in two stems. They're not gonna to take too much space. They can come up at a fairly narrow angle. So I'll put a V-shaped arrangement of strings down. 
later on I will tie them underneath that main split and yeah that it should be fine they don't need a huge amount at 40 centimeters they're not going to get in each other's way they're not going to compromise airflow or anything like that so I don't think I'd want to put them much closer than that but yeah 40 should be fine so some of these I think may have a little bit of aphid trouble with them and those sweet bananas look like most of them are splitting into three stems these are always a little bit variable I've got some splitting into two and this one is in three so again I'll take note of where these are and make sure that two of them are in this plane so that they can be trained up easily so where's the first one going right in the corner I think I've got the soapy stuff in case I spot any aphid and there is just a touch in there they will get right in on those young leaves and yeah, that is a pain. Again, I'll take a few of these lower leaves off. They, they're not going to help. Very little photosynthesis there. Oh, well, there is some aphid. Let me check under those. Yeah, there's a little bit on there. Not so much that I need to wash these off like I did with the aubergines. Just a little squirt of the soapy water should deal with those for now. Now these I expect to have lots of root. Well, actually, I mean they've got plenty, but it's not as bad as I feared it might be. I've been kind of holding these back for a while and yeah, not bad. <sighs> right, let me get the orientation right with the two strongest stems in that plane and I think that is it. Just firm that in. They will be quite happy in here I think. Now I've got the soaker hose under here somewhere. Better find that before I put my trowel through it. Right, I set the tape on there at 440 and away I go. Uh, right, 400. I got on this one. Yeah, that's three again. Um, I think that way. Planting in the greenhouse is easy. This this soil is really deep and it's light. It's not much stone in it because we sieved this out years ago and it's had tons of organic matter so it's always really pleasant to work. Well this part of the job is done. That's a dozen red peppers in here and a dozen yellow in the other greenhouse. I'll give you a quick look at those. So they're quite tall already and some of these have split nicely. The first flowers are starting to show up. These are always pretty slow compared with the smaller fruited sorts and that's why I like to grow a nice mixture so these I think of as our sort of like main crop peppers and they will come in later in the season and in fact last year I was picking these I think right into December which was a bit mad obviously they weren't growing and they weren't really ripening but they were still holding their fruit 
and they were just slowly turning red or yellow. So anyway, these will give us that crop later in the year and, and the smaller fruited sorts, well, some of those have already got peppers on, which is great. Well, this is always our biggest planting day of the year. Well, I say day, usually it takes me a couple of days to get all of this done. And today is no exception. The light is fading and so am I. So I'm gonna pack up now and tomorrow I will return and pot up the rest of the chilies and peppers in the smaller greenhouse. And hopefully I can get those on the automatic watering systems. If not, I'm sure that job can wait for a week or so.